I know. Oh, no! <laughs> no! Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Kid Cudi. He's a Grammy award-winning artist, multi-hyphenate entertainer, and true to form, he just dropped a brand new album accompanied by an animated TV special of the same name. It's called Intergalactic. Check out the album wherever you get your music and watch the special, which is now currently streaming on Netflix. Kid Cudi, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. I feel like this is one of those shoots been, that's been literally years in the making. Yeah. What's going through your head as you finally prepare to take on the Hot Ones Gauntlet? I'm confident that I'm gonna make it to the end, you know, but I, I have no idea what I want to experience on this journey. I'm really, uh, really kind of nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah, let's do it. No. I can eat more if I want, right? Go ahead, <laughs> and I'll follow you right along with. That was good. That was good. Nice. So dating back to the original Man on the Moon, your albums have always had a cinematic, sonic quality to them. So I can only imagine how cathartic it must have been for you to take Intergalactic and then actually storyboard it out for an animated adaptation. And then costume design, it's not a discipline that you'd often associate with animation, but it really is at the heart of Intergalactic's aesthetic. What role did Virgil Abloh play in shaping the fashion of this world? Well, um, it was really like, I, I put it all on him, you know? I, I, really went into this knowing that like I wanted the characters to be fresh. I didn't want it to be like, you know, a typical animated show where you see one character wearing the same thing every episode, you know? Virgil came through and just put his magic sauce on it and just made, you know, wardrobe for each character in there that matched their personality. I was so like happy because I was like, oh my God, like this was the best idea I could have ever came up with. You know, it could have been could have been in this and making some really shitty clothing, you know, but I have like the illest, freshest motherfucker alive <laughs> doing this shit for me. And it's and, and it was just it was just the illest man. And I, I love him to death for that, you know. Yeah, these first two, I, I need them to go. Mm hmm. So in the A Man Named Scott documentary, Plain Pat says a first working with you. It was so different and weird that I'd feel uncomfortable, but I love it. Was there a watershed moment? Maybe it was a song, maybe it was a show where it went from this sort of experimental bohemian exercise to all of a sudden record labels and a bidding war for you? I think I think it was the mixtape. Because the mixtape was playful and fun. And it was just all about like showing people I could rap. And you know, the album was like, no, this is like the Oscar nominated version of an album, you know? I lived with Dot for almost three years and during this time we were making music and we made Day and Night and a number of other records and from there and then we we added a meal and then it was just like when I had those three guys, I was just, I was golden. And I liked even hearing from Emil when he was talking about how he'd play you beats that he prepared, but you wouldn't really react to those things. It wasn't until he would just be like playing a synth or like pulling out old records. Yeah, and... I mean, that's because, you know, that's the, that's the shit that was like, the, the type of records he would play, you know, were always like interesting and like weird, you know? And that was, you know, my shit. Like I just wanted something that didn't sound like the typical shit that you would hear in hip hop, you know, like with ghosts, like you hear ghosts, you hear that sample. I was like, what the fuck, you know, like, and Ghost is still to this day, like one of my top three favorite songs. You're crushing it. Are you ready to move on to wing number three? This is Pico Rico here oh, and you're doing great. You're Pico doing great. Rico, let's go, <laughs> coño. Mmm. <laughs> These first three, I'm good. But I see, when I get down to here, it's 
It's probably gonna get real. <laughs> So even as your music career exploded, you've still remained a prolific actor. And earlier this year, it was announced that you'd be making your directorial debut in an upcoming Netflix project called Teddy. What's the best audition tip or note that you've ever gotten from Timothy Chalamet? I think I asked him about crying on camera once. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've given him like audition tapes that I've done before. And I'm just like, hell man, shoot me straight. You know, he's always like, oh, it's good, it's good. And like, I, he's always, I don't know, he could be lying to me. Uh, <laughs> but he's always he's always very supportive. And, and um, I know Timmy is a fan of me for music, but I, you know, I think he's a fan of me as an actor as well. My lips are tingling. Well, <laughs> a whole lot more is about to happen as we work our way down. But Gibbs first things first, off. the hot ones, barbacoa here. You know, I'm a two bite kind of guy. I respect it. I know you do the same thing I do, so I'm trying to test you. I know, you're testing me, pushing me. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the only one standing by the end of this. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm ready. But you do this. You do this all the time. You do this on the reg. I know, right? But at some point, I'm going to hit that wall, right? I mean, at some point, you're going to be like, I'm tired of fire poopies. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just gonna say like that's what I'm gonna ask you after this, man. Like, sure, you can ask me during whatever. Yeah. You know, this can be this can go both ways. Because your here. bowels are probably like, what the <laughs> fuck? You know what's fascinating is your body adjusts. You know, you do really? a show no like way. Hot Ones this long. I'll go to Equinox after this. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh no man, way! I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, I don't want to get overconfident. It's like an athlete, you know? Like, I think you probably have a physical prime, and then, you know, maybe the wings will start to slow me down. But right now, I'm good. Oh right my now, I'm God. good. I'm going to age like Brady over here. Yeah, I was like, Sean has a stomach of steel, <laughs> man. Straight up. Okay, here we go. It's crunchy. <laughs> Do I always have to take two bites? You know, you make the rules over here. You're making the rules over here. I'm just following along with you. I'm just hungry, so I came in here starving. Um, I don't know if that was a good idea. <laughs> All right, Kid Cudi, we have a crane segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guests on Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. And for you, we have a theme. It's a Kid Cudi style retrospective. So what we've done is we pulled some of our favorite Kid Cudi fit pics, and we're just curious how you react, how you reflect looking back on those things now. Oh my God. All right. Laptop, please, Bill. There we go. Bring it back right. the laptop. Very go. rare. Thank you very much. Awesome. Do you have a favorite memory from walking at the Palais Royal Gardens for Virgil Abloh's first Louis Vuitton collection? Yes, I do. It just didn't feel real. You know, the whole thing was just like, you know, like a dream, you know? Um, and I was soaking it up so much that like, uh, I was walking really slow on the on the on the runway, so like you can't see in this picture. Like there's like all those people stacked up behind me. <laughs> that's but a traffic like, jam yeah, behind yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this person got this good ass photo because it was like no, it was like <laughs> 20 feet between me and the other dude in front of me. Like it was like right there. But uh, I was just uh, I was really high and I was just soaking <laughs> it up, man. I was like this is a beautiful moment. So yeah. What's the biggest difference between working at a vape store and working at Abercrombie and Fitch? And then oh how did God. each shape your personal style? Working at the Abercrombie and Fitch store, the clothes sucked and <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't like I was like proud to be wearing Abercrombie and Fitch. Like their jeans were all right, I guess. Their jeans were all right, I guess. <laughs> but when I worked at the vape store, that was the first time I was like, oh man, like this is like actually some fresh shit. But like you know, I was so poor when I got that job. So I didn't own any bait prior to working there. So uh, I literally had the same brown Bathing Ape t-shirt and these jeans and these yellow uh, roadsters. And I had that for like two months, that outfit. And I used to ask my coworkers if I could borrow some of their clothes and they would hold me down and let me borrow a hoodie or two. And working at that store was, was like, was like the greatest, to me, and at that time, like it was bigger than getting a record deal. Yeah. You know, like, and I really wanted a record deal at that time, you know. But it was like, <laughs> well, shit, I got the baby store, I'm good, you know. Like it just, it just, it was such a, a major thing because of what it meant to the culture and what it was. 
Nigo came to the store with the Teriyaki Boys one time and I met them. Fast forward all the years later when we did the, the Complex magazine cover. So it was like this full circle moment, you know, just being around the God, you know, it was, it was so cool, man. So cool. Bill, nice. thank you very much. I got, I got to get one of those hot ones t-shirts too. We got you. Put it, put it in his to-go bag with the sauces. All right? And I wanted to-go wings too. There you go. Do we have extras? The first four. We got to hit that rider. We got to hit that rider. Kid Cuddy, are you ready to move on here to the back half already? You're I'm, doing I'm, great. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of waiting for this shit to get real now. It's not, it hasn't gotten real yet. It's kind of like, you know, a little kicky, but it's not crazy. This is the C. Turmeric bomb. See if this does it for you. I mean, this shit is like green. <laughs> <laughs> this shit looks wrong. Oh my god, I'm not gonna take two bites. Yes, yeah, it's, it's um, hold on. <laughs> I'm holding down. <laughs> Hip hop icons like Jay Z, Nas, Eminem, and Snoop are often credited as being the first generation of rap superstars to really show that they can age along with the genre. And I've heard you talk about how you don't want to be performing on stage late into your 40s, but I am curious are there people that you see as paradigms for what it looks like to age as an artist to you? Yeah, like um, Jay Z for sure, you know, um, but I, th I feel like I don't have what they have. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. I don't. I, I just don't. I, I just don't know if I want to. If I want to do. Uh, if I want to just do music, drop albums for too much longer. You know, I'm kind of nearing the end on on all things Kid Cudi. I think. That sounds like kind of breaking news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really curious to see what else I can do. I was thinking about this, and this is like a a wacky idea I had years ago. But like, it would be cool to like one day, like be a kindergarten teacher, you know? Just do that for like a couple of years. Like when I'm like 50, you know? Just like for like 10 years, I was a kindergarten teacher, you know? And I just like infect the youth with that freshness, like <laughs> get them young. And then this is a, those kids will just sprinkle the freshness to the world. And I'll just be like, yes, yes. <laughs> Cosmic Disco? Sounds like my flavor. <laughs> this sounds like my flavor. What's your flavor? Ooh. I see you contemplating a second bite. No. <laughs> it's that time. It just happens like this, I <laughs> know. I'm following your lead to the strawberry shake. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> no. On the topic of Cosmic Disco, what do you mean when uh, you describe the style of your music as space punk rock? What was that? Repeat the question, sweet Jesus. <laughs> space punk rock. I've heard you describe your style of music as space punk rock. Yeah. It's space punk rock. <laughs> 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 Space punk rock. Yes, that's the that, <laughs> damn fuck. Oh man. Uh super synthy but reckless and dangerous and edgy. If aliens visited Earth and all you were armed with was a kid cutty playlist to greet the encounter, which kid cutty song? would you have as a way to, you know, make sure humanity stays in the alien's good graces? Embrace the Martian. Embrace the Martian. <laughs> Notice how from the second you said that you were waiting for it, it came, you know? <laughs> it was like you... You asked for it, Scott. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
And that's immediately in outer space. Men on the moon over here. This is some bullshit. <laughs> Yo, man. Yeah. This one is fucked up. Yeah. This is I not, agree with this you 100%. Is, these, are these last two like this, kind of like that? So this is me telling you the truth. Oh my God. Nothing is like this. Nothing okay, okay, okay. is like this sauce. Whoa! Oh my God, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> no! <laughs> fuck, Sean! Hot ones indeed, hot ones indeed. <laughs> Woo! Uh. So when we had Seth Rogen on the show, he said that thick patties are for dickheads. As a cheeseburger connoisseur yourself, do you agree or disagree on that? Thick patties. Thick patties for dickheads. <laughs> um. Oh. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> See. The water soothes better. So, science would tell you that the water makes things worse. Yeah. But I find that there's something, and maybe it's psychological, about the ice cold water. It's kind of soothing to me. Yeah. I think science is wrong on this one. This makes it like, I, I feel like I could get through. <laughs> I feel like I could get through with the water. The milkshake, the milkshake wasn't doing shit. <laughs> milkshake was just like, Delicious, but like still like <laughs> on fire. My fucking nose is running. Oh my God, sweet Jesus. Where do you fall on ketchup on a burger? Yay or nay on that? Yeah. I mean, I'm the type of person that puts a ridiculous amount of ketchup on a burger. So much so like when you put the top bun on, it just runs off the sides, you know? <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to do. Oh my God. Pucker butt? It's a show I have to apologize for, you know? Okay, here we go. So. Nothing fun about this one, but I think after the last one. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> 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 why, why, dude, dude, this, this, is a, this is a nightmare. I thought it was going to be fun talking to you about shit. Man, I asked Shia if you get the, 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 the fire shits after this. He said no, so that's good. Right, and I'm telling you no, too. We're good. We're yeah, good. We're good. Yeah. As bad as it is right now, that's the worst it's going to be. Oh, my God. So I once heard you muse about wanting to go on a bar mitzvah tour because you find them to be so fun. Exactly, and lucrative. What is the <laughs> sickest bar mitzvah that you've ever performed at? Oh my God, the very first one. The very first bar mitzvah. And, and, and they, they paid me 30 grand to do three songs. I come out and I do the song and the kids are all excited. I was there and I was having a moment and they were like taking pictures and I was just like, wow, I feel like, it was like early on in my career. So I was just like, oh my God. These kids make me feel more famous than I ever felt before <laughs> in my life, you know? And then, after that, I was like, okay, I've always wanted this Rolex, a presidential day day, right? I, to I totally was like, okay, I'm gonna take this money and I'm gonna go buy this Rolex. So that's, and I still have that Rolex. I still wear it to this day. And um, it, was a, it was a great buy. It was one of the, it was one of my most important buys because it was like, First off, I really, 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 really wanted that that watch. And I was dreaming about it before I had money, and then I finally got it, and I was like, oh man, this is so cool, you know? And you have that first bar mitzvah to thank for it. Yeah, oh my God. Mmm. Goddamn. My jibs are on fire right now, Sean. <laughs> Since I'm at the end, I'll, you know, let me put a little extra on it. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. See that? I see that. I see that okay. I'm following suit. Okay. Okay. Just for all the marbles. Cheers, Kid Cuddy. Cheers. What a ride. Yeah.
I know. Uh, I know. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> no! My God! Oh. I know. I know. But the good news, Kid Cuddy, is we have reached the end of our Hot Ones gauntlet and just one more ball to balance on your nose before we roll credits. What? You Come on, what the fuck else you want? <laughs> You've hummed better melodies than most artists have ever written, and fans know that you can transform a whole song without even using a word. So what I'll do to close things out is I'll point at a sauce, and you just hum the first feeling that it evokes when you think about what it was like <laughs> to eat that sauce, okay? Oh, oh God. <laughs> All right, up first, <coughs> Fly by Jing. <laughs> Cosmic Disco. <laughs> da Bomb Beyond Insanity. <laughs> was that good? That was so good. Looks like we have another hit on our hands. And look at you, Kid uh, Cudi, taking on the Hot Ones uh, gauntlet, calling your shot, making it all the way to the end. Uh, now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. I got this fucking show, Intergalactic, coming out next <laughs> week. Oh, no. I, I mean, it's out now. I don't know when you guys are airing this. Uh, got a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay fucking tuned. Oh. Oh. I made it through, though. You bodied it. I did. And no one can take that away from no you. No one can take that shit away from me, Sean. <laughs> no one. No one. They can kiss my ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck, Sean! Hot Ones fans, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you want to get your hands on the season 19 Hot Ones Hot Sauce Gauntlet, boy, do I have good news for you. Just visit heatness.com, heatness.com. That's heatness.com to get your hands on the 10 pack, the season 19 Hot Ones 10 pack. Hot Ones in a box delivered right to your door. I highly recommend it. It's delicious. I eat it every week.